All right, so welcome to my series of video on statistics. And in this video, I'm going to teach on the hypothesis test for proportion. Now, a prerequisite to this video is that um, I, I, I advise that you watch um, the series of short videos on hypothesis testing for mean. Once you understand the hypothesis testing for mean, we should be able to easily understand the hypothesis test for a proportion, all right? Once we understand the hypothesis test for mean, we should be able to understand the hypothesis test for a proportion. Now here, the null and alternative hypothesis are stated like the same way we do for the mean, all right? Then a null hypothesis should be a statement concerning the parameter that includes the equality. Then we specify the significance level. And here also, the test can be one-tailed or two-tailed, depending on the hypothesis that we formulate, OK? Now, one thing we must know about proportion in questions is that we have to be very careful. When it comes to hypothesis testing for proportions, OK, how we would know the question is on proportion is that it is a hypothesis test for qualitative data, okay? For instance, let's say if I ask my students a question that would you write the quiz or not? So let's say 10 students, somebody says you write, somebody say not write. So write, 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 so one, two, three, four, five, six. Write, not write, write, and not um, write, and write, okay? Now here, there are 10 people. So we have the right, the people who said write is one, two, three, four, five, six. The people who said we should write the quiz is one. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight people said we should write. Now the reason why I said hypothesis test for proportion is for qualitative data is that this is not quantitative. So anytime you are testing a hypothesis like, find the my null hypothesis says that they will write, the alternative says they will not write. Something like this is purely qualitative and it's a hypothesis test for proportion. So always the question will give you a clue as to how to even compute the proportion before you use it for the hypothesis testing, okay? So here, the proportion that said the right would be what, eight over 10, that is 0 0.8. The proportion that said the right is what, eight over 10, eight out of 10, that is what, 0 0.8. If you are lucky, the question will give you the proportion straight forward. But if you are not lucky, in a standard test, you would compute the proportions before you use it for your computation. So every proportion question will have categorical or qualitative data that has two outcomes. Like this example, either you write or you don't write. All right. And that is how we do hypothesis testing for proportion. Examples are whether the item is defective or they are not defective, okay? Whether you agree to a proposal or you don't agree to a proposal, yes or no. Whether you write the quiz or you don't write, yes or no. So all these things, they are hypothesis testing for proportions. Now, we, the, these are the steps. So you can just read through the steps quickly. You can just pause the video and just glance through the steps quickly. But I believe if you understand, um, the procedure we use for the mean proportions should also be simple, all right? Now, let's remember Let's remember how we computed the z value of a proportion. The z value of a proportion of a proportion is the sample proportion minus the population proportion all over square root of P into back at one minus T over N. This is how we compute the Z value of a proportion, all right? So similar to testing hypothesis for mean, when it comes to testing hypothesis for proportion, we compute the Z value of the proportion and compare it 
to the critical Z value, all right? So if the computed Z value of, of a proportion is greater than the critical Z value, we reject the hypothesis, all right? All right, so sorry about the interruption. So here, if the computer Z value is greater than the critical Z value, we reject. And if the computer Z value of the proportion is less than the critical Z value, we fail to reject, all right? But when it comes to P value, P, P value, if the P value is less than the significant level, we reject. But when the computer P value is more than the significance level, we fail to reject, all right? So that is quite pretty simple. So let's look at this question. A league is considering increasing the season ticket prices for basketball games. The marketing manager is concerned that some people will terminate the ticket orders of if this change occurs. If more than 10% of the season ticket will be terminated, the manager will not want to implement price increase, okay? So here, the question is saying that the manager is concerned that some people will terminate their ticket if the change occurs. Then it says, if more than 10, will terminate, if more than 10% of the people will terminate their ticket, he will not want to increase the price, okay? So here, the manager is claiming, he is claiming that 10% might want to terminate their ticket. So the claim is not here. So he's claiming that 10% would want to terminate the tickets, okay? So the claim will be stated in the alternative. Remember, any claim is stated in the alternative. So the proportion of people who want to terminate the tennis is what, 10%. That's P is greater than 0 0.1. Okay, that means that the null will be the opposite where P is less than or equal to 0 0.1. Okay. Now, we are going to compute our P value. We are going to compute, sorry, we are going to compute the T value of the proportion, all right? We are going to compute the T value of the proportion. The P value, sorry, sorry, I'm going to compute the Z value of the proportion, the Z value of the proportion. So this is the formula for computing the Z value of the proportion. So here, the formula for computing the Z value of the proportion is this. Sample proportion minus population proportion all over P into bracket one minus P all over N, all right? So here, if we compute that, in this question, the question does not give information. Let's listen carefully. In this question, the question does not give information on the sample proportion figure. All right, so it will be very difficult to compute the Z value or the P value. It will be very difficult. But then in this video or in this section, you are going to learn the third approach of computing or testing hypothesis. So the third approach is to find the critical value of the mean or the critical value of the proportion, all right? We are not going to find the critical Z, but we are going to find the critical proportion itself. And that is the third approach, which I also think is very, very simple. Now, here, if the null hypothesis is less than or equal to 0 0.1, okay, what it means is that if you draw the diagram, the null hypothesis is that it should be less than or equal to 0 0.1. So we are looking for all here, less than or equal to 0 0.1. Okay, but then because of sampling error, we allow for a little more than. So let's allow for a little more than. 
So everything here will be the acceptance rating. So anything greater than this. So the one in red here will be the rejection region. All right. Now let's compute for the upper limit of this. Let's compute the confidence interval for the upper limit. So it will be x plus or minus the z value times the standard error of proportion. We all know standard error of proportion, right? The standard error of proportion is, let me check. Um, yes, the standard error of proportion is square root of, so this is the standard error of a proportion. It is square root of p into bracket one minus p all over n. This is the standard. Um, this is the standard error of a proportion. Okay, so let's compute the standard error. So the proportion is zero point one into bracket one minus zero point one all over 100 square root, okay? So when you compute this, your answer is going to be, zero point one, zero plus or minus. Now when we are, this, this is a one tail test as we can all see from the diagram. Okay, so one tail test for 95% confidence, if it is one tail, the alpha will be the alpha for the upper limit will be 1.645. That's if it is one tilt. Okay, 95% confidence, one tilt. The alpha, or oh, sorry, the Z value, sorry, not alpha, the Z value is going to be 1.645 for 95% confidence, one tilt. The Z value is going to be 1.645. Okay. So 0 0.1 plus or minus 1.645. Times the confidence, times the standard error we have computed. So, from the standard error, one minus zero point one is zero point nine times zero um, times zero point one. That's zero point three six. So zero point one here times zero point nine, right? So one minus 0 0.1 is 0 0.9. Okay, so we are computing the z-score. So one minus 0 0.1 is 0 0.9 times 0 0.1 is 0 0.09. So we have 0 0.09 over 100 and then square root of that, right? So square root of 0 0.0009 is 0 0.03. So the standard error is 0 0.03, okay? That's the standard error. So 1.645 times 0 0.03, all right? But we are looking for the upper limit. So the upper limit um, would be, 0 0.1. It should be 0 0.1 plus everything here. So the answer will be 0 0.149, okay? The answer will be 0 0.149. So it means that even if you are 95% confidence, the upper limit of the confidence interval will be 0 0.149, all right? So if you draw this, we are looking for 0 0.1, okay? We are looking for 0 0.1 and below, 0 0.1 and below, but we allow for a little above, all right? We allow for a little above, okay? We allow for a little above to be here. Now,
here, the little about we can allow up to pay our computation, the little about we can allow up to is for 0 0.149. All right, that's a little about we can allow up to. All right, now assuming that you get the sample proportion to be 0 0.14, it means that it falls within this range. 0 0.14 is less than 0 0.149. All right, 0 0.14 is less than 0 0.149. So we are going to accept the hypothesis. Okay, we are going to accept the hypothesis. So 0 0.149, that's the little about we can allow up to. So if the actual sample proportion is 0 0.14, it means it falls within the range and you accept it, okay? Now I'm going to use the Z-value approach to, to explain for us to get the picture clearly. 